So it's day one of an impressive debut. Way better than the AAF's debut. And I gotta tell you, um, I, I I thought, you know, I had expectations that were pretty high. Uh, but this blew me out of the water, let me tell you. Seeing everything in action was just like, man, I think I'm gonna be a fan of this league for a while. So the XFL, you guys have earned it. You have impressed me, and you're gonna keep me around until your championship game um, on April the what? April 26th. So you're gonna keep me around for the first season. You've got a fan, you know, and you know there's, there's gonna be some good games tomorrow. But today, today let's focus on today's games. And the first game up uh, was the Seattle Dragons and the DC Defenders. Uh, this game was pretty back and forth um, throughout the throughout the uh, throughout the game, but uh, but once Brandon Silvers threw a couple of interceptions, you know it was it was just like, oh man, that ain't gonna happen. Uh, but we had had a big hit to start off the season. Um, let me tell you, we had some beautiful interceptions being thrown. And by beautiful, I mean the people catching those interceptions. Um, we've had some missed kicks already. There was a missed kick in this game. So now the the curse of XFL kickers is now beginning. So, <laughs> and we've seen what you know. Nobody was really willing to try out the three point conversion today, and I don't blame them. Um, you just go for the two or one, which is. Um, again, you know, the three-point version is probably going to be, like, for, like, those special situations. But everything else was perfect aside from, oh, yeah, two other things. Um, the, the player interviews, like, you know, like, during, like, during intermediate periods where there was nothing going on, you know, those were kind of cringy. Especially the ones that ABC did, those were cringy. Let me tell you that. Fox kept it to a little bit more of a minimum. Um, but, and, uh, I really didn't really care for, you know, like, everybody being mic'd up, um, as we already know, somebody had the, you know, just go on a profane tirade and dust, and I think that's probably gonna get toned down, so we're probably gonna see less people mic'd up, um, but yeah, DC, let me talk about DC a little bit more first, uh, because we gotta talk about Cardale Jones, man. 16 to 26, 291 yards, two TDs, no picks. And his longest play was longest um throw was a 70 yard to Cobbs. And it was a beautiful throw. He made beautiful throws all over the place. Uh one to Rogers was like a 27 yarder. Uh, the one to Rashad Ross, which we all know. Um, it was a beautiful throw. Uh, Lee, Ernsberger, Presley, Dupree, as I'm looking down here at the stats, um, and stuff like that. There was some beautiful throws thrown by Cardell Jones today. Beautiful, just absolutely beautiful, man. Good stuff. That is all good stuff. Um, not much else really happened here, to be completely honest with you. Yeah, Brandon Silver's threw three touchdowns, but again, those two picks really, really cost the, 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 uh, the Dragons. So, there's that. And then we go to the second game here of the day that just concluded about, um, at the time it was recorded like five to ten minutes ago. It just finished. Um, now I have no idea who this Knopf kid is. Charlie Knopf. I have no idea who this guy is at all. Let me tell you that. He ended up being the starter for the Los Angeles Wildcats, and and we do get basically a blowout. Um, Houston, the Roughnecks, just blew, just blew them out the water. Suffocated defense um, by the Roughnecks, 37-17, it's the bottom there. Just absolutely beautiful. Um, and Charlie Knopf had some big throws too, especially one of the... Um, a big throw to Smallwood at the very, you know, tail end of, you know, the very, it was one of the touchdowns early in the game. 
because, I mean, Los Angeles had a big, well, actually, it wasn't a big lead. It was like 17 to 12. But then, you know, once once that 17 to 12 stretch was over, Houston just started to start clapping cheeks. They started to clap the wildcat cheeks, baby. They started to do it, and they did it well. Um, lots and lots of drop balls by LA Wildcat receivers, though. Lots of drops, and that has to be fixed. There was some switching in and out of in and out of the field by the quarterbacks for LA as well. McClendon got about four or five snaps in there, um, especially four passes, and he got picked off on one of them though, which is unfortunate. But PJ Walker, man. Dude was balling out, let me tell you. 23 of 39, 272 yards, four touchdowns, and an interception. Let me tell you, that, and he also ran for 26 yards today as well. What a performance, young man. You did absolutely excellent. Let me tell you that. So, what did we learn? What did we learn about the XFL today? I think... The XFL is going to stick around for a little while. I don't think it's going to be three years. I think it'll stick around for a lot longer than three years, man. This is great. Um, how do you feel? Um, DC looked pretty filled up. I don't know about um, I don't know about Houston Stadium, but it was pretty close to being sold out for a 20,000-seat field. But, um, yeah, XFL Day 1 was a success big success and let's do it again tomorrow let's do it again tomorrow so that means that everybody you know who i am my name's michael and lloyd big boy sports and we're gonna do another video real quick here to cap off the night so see y'all tomorrow peace